Welcome to another episode. It's episode 18, and today we're talking about how democracy strikes back. First off, apologies for taking a little break. I think we deserved it. We've been quite yeah. overworked, especially with the release of our new channel, which we'll tease a little bit at the end. Yeah. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it already. This is a GoPro mount. Yeah, he's moving the uh, <laughs> I'm just moving everything so microphone. that I can actually gain access to everything. All right, guys. So I guess we're just going to get stuck into it today. We're going to start out with, of course, what's new. And uh, what's new is when we talk about anything that's kind of new in the whole China sphere. And we have something that uh, is pretty relevant to what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about something to do with Australia. Maybe you can give everybody a hint. Piss off, okay? <laughs> That's a very good If hint. you guys are old old ADV podcast hands, as we call them, what? Um, you will know who this is. And this man that we're about to talk about, his name is David Gulasi, yeah. otherwise known as David Hohut. And if you look at his mug, you might recognize him. He is someone with millions of followers on the Chinese internet. Yes. He's from Australia. Yeah. He originally was living in Hohut, and then he moved somewhere else. But he uh, became famous for being very, very pro-China yeah. and very critical of foreigners living in China. Mm -hmm. So we made a kind of meme out of him with the piss off okay thing. Well, that's his thing. He made his own meme. We're not in the habit of like trying to attack people's character, no, by no, the no, way. No. This is very pertinent. And the reason we're actually featuring him here is he made a video when he went back to Australia for the Christmas break. He made a video which rocketed him to fame again. Mm. Uh, he got over um, like... Chinese TikTok. Yeah, like 500,000 followers in a day. And, well, we're just going to play the video for you. And mm -hmm. the best part is is that a Chinese-Australian guy actually made a comeback to him. So Ooh, it's delicious. You know, it's, it, yeah, it's always good. So we're going to play it. We're going to leave you with him for a minute. Let's do it. Oh, <laughs> Uh, you know, we, we should probably translate. Yeah, okay. So, so the, he says, I really needed to guys tell you guys something. Yeah, uh, about an a, issue. An issue in Australia. Mm -hmm. When I came to Australia, I had a thing called reverse culture shock. I'm very used to the Chinese lifestyle about everything. And I came to Australia, I feel like, uh, I feel like it's very, uh, not convenient, you know? Convenient. Like, I'll give you some examples, like if you don't drive a car, if you don't do a lot of things, you just... I, I just have to say something about the way he's talking. Mm -hmm. He like to say? is dumbing himself down. It's insulting because what he's doing is he's trying to make himself sound slower and dumber for like stupid people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just... It's, like it's if, also a Chinese accent on his English. Yeah, but the way he's talking, and I see this in Africa as well, mm -hmm. is when like... You get someone like, let's say, a white person talking to like a, a black dude. You'll get the same. They'll put on like an accent and talk slower. And I find it kind of insulting. It is. <laughs> so this guy, he's yeah. got a. He's literally putting on a fake Chinese accent like, to sound more. Okay, palatable. guys, like because it's just going yeah. <laughs> to be. You know. Um. Anyway, just wanted to point that out. That's yeah. what he's doing. To sum up the beginning, though, he's talking about how he has reverse culture shock after yeah. coming back from China. He's just visiting Australia. Yeah. Ride a bike, you can get anywhere. There's subways, everything. That's just a jar. Shadow mail will call. I love the way he's throwing in colloquialism. Shadow mail will call. That's like a Dongbei accent. It, and you know, shadow means shimadou mail. Mm. He's just trying to be all like streetwise, like, like yeah. you know. But the thing is, he's saying, like in China, you get public transport, mm. you can go anywhere on a bicycle or a bus or whatever, but there's like nothing in Australia, you can't do anything, mm -hmm. which you know, it's not really true, but. I'll give China the fact that they've got a good public transport oh, system, one hundred percent. So that's not the most yeah. important part. The, again, we shouldn't really be picking apart his whole uh -uh. video because it's what he says at the end mm. that's so important. We want uh, you guys to see the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> he says, "If you don't have a car you just in die. Australia, you die. You just You're die. You're dead. <laughs> you can't go anywhere. Just the Uber, what my ya? One hour, I'll be." Oh, what a Maya. He's trying to be all like, it's like, oh my God, like over here, the Uber is just like 20 Australian for, dollars per for, kilometer. Like, for a kilometer. Which I don't know if that's true. I, I doubt it. It seems a bit that's much. That's a bit, that's a yeah, bit Yeah, whatever. You buy a dollar and maybe we'll call. <laughs> what cow? Oh, cow. So yeah. I'll teach you guys some Chinese swearing. What yeah. cow? Cow is the F word. Yeah. Um, and I won't say the F word because I don't get demonetized. But sure. cow is like a, a teenager version of that. It's like kind of saying crap instead of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you guys learn. It's something. very, very normal mm -hmm. colloquialism. It means F me. Yeah. yeah. 
Again, what car? And then he switches to English because, you know, his Chinese isn't good enough. He, so he has like, these colloquialisms that mm. he uses to sound fluent, and then he switches code switches to English. Yeah, it's like, so go to, go to a bank, you want to do anything at a bank, you know, screw me, it's difficult. You can't right. do anything. More than one hour. It's like Zhongguo, I go to some Zhongguo Yinghang or ICBC or something. It's like, tuk, 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 bing. It's like yeah, it's so quick. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> this, is, this is something I take offense to. Me too. When you go to the bank in America, mm. how, what's the most amount of time you've had to wait? Um, th there might be one person in front of me in a queue. Okay. You know, when you go to the actual teller. And if you're going to go in for like something important, you make an appointment and when you get there, you, you do it. Sure. Let's say 10 minutes. Yeah, sure. Now, let me ask you this. What's the least amount of time you've had to spend in a Chinese bank? That's okay. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Probably half an hour. 20 minutes is the least. I think that's le that's yeah. lucky. You know, the, the thing is, again, it's not the fault of China. It's the large population. Sure, Unless sure. this guy lives in a one horse town in China. When you get into the bank, you have to take a number. Okay. There's a machine. And you walk up and it's in Chinese. Some of them have an English option. And then you choose like, is it account services or deposit, whatever. You choose your thing. It prints out a little ticket for you. And you have to go and wait on a bench with like hundreds, literally hundreds of people. Right. And there's like four tellers do you, and they call your number. Do you know what I've seen uh, old Chinese IEs like aunties do? They'll go in there on like a really, really busy. I almost code switch like him. Yeah, I yeah, like, yeah. Busy. Yeah. You go there on like a really busy day and people need to get in and out, but they're waiting for like three, four hours sometimes. Mm -hmm. They'll get the numbers and just print them out there yeah. when the security guard's not looking, and they'll actually sell them. Yeah, for like they sell 10 them. Kwai. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. That's totally true. This anyway, is so full of shit. You know, the problem is like I, like I said, I don't want to do a character assassination. You can see exactly what this guy's doing. Oh, for sure. This is what makes him popular. Is he basically says how amazing China is compared to the West? He's trying to say, oh look Which how is whatever. Look how crappy the West is. Right. China's way better, and then he gets these like gushing support sure. from the national. Sure, but the issue comes later. Yeah. I really miss China, you know. And uh, I wish I would you the like Meituan. We're hungry. We just stand Meituan or Ulama or something. Sure. Okay. Well, let's see what is the comparison. Okay. Shadow mail. You have to. Go to the supermarket or you will just... Hold up. Okay, so he, he said, in China, wow, it's so simple. In the middle of the night, you're hungry. You just use Olama or whatever. Because it's true. In China, you can mm. order food any time of the day or night. And the delivery cost is pretty much zero. Right. So if you order something that's over like five US dollars you know, value, they'll send a guy on a bicycle for free mm. to deliver it to you. So he's like, but here in the West, there's nothing in Australia. There's no he literally said there's nothing. You have to go to the supermarket. So has he heard of Uber Eats or DoorDash or, Door Dash or, or any of those? Grubhub? He's probably out of touch because he's been out of you know, Australia for yeah, so long. Yeah, he probably doesn't have any of that crap on his phone. Because mm, he's only got the Chinese apps on his phone. Right. right. You, know, you know what's really funny, though, is a lot of those Chinese apps actually work in mm. places like Australia. Mm -hmm. They do. They've got their own like localized delivery stuff through those apps and things they do actually work mm -hmm. especially since australia belongs to china <laughs> anyway so let's let's get to the the meat of this let's we're gonna shut up and we're gonna let this guy by the way uh there is a link mm -hmm. to this guy's video if you want to watch the whole thing because we cut this out yeah he actually did a long tirade in chinese um where he addressed everything that david galassi said and he put subtitles, so don't worry. He's got English yeah, subtitles. Yeah. It's it's linked in the description. I implore all of you guys to go and take he's, a look. He's awesome. Yeah, go give him go give him a subscribe. He deserves it. He's you know a Chinese Australian, and uh, let's hear what he has to say in English. Before before we get into that, real quick, yeah. just in case, because I don't think that part was in. We had to cut this out of his video because this is on Chinese TikTok, which we yeah. can't use in America. Yeah. So basically, at the end, David Golasi says, "I don't care about freedom." Yes, that's right? right. He didn't. That's why wasn't that in here? I don't know. It just okay. wasn't cut into okay. that guy's video there. But anyway, David Gulasi, you go watch the whole video. Yeah, you'll figure yeah. it out. But he basically says, I, I don't care about freedom. He says, freedom what, is shit. He says, what is freedom? Yeah, like, freedom is shit. I can't do anything here, but in China, I can do anything. Like, who who needs freedom? I just want to be comfortable. Right, and he says, I just want convenience. Yeah. Freedom is bullshit. Yeah, who needs freedom? That's, yeah. that's actually what yes. he said. That's the most important part. I don't yeah. know why it's been cut out of this. 
but um, it doesn't matter. This guy fully addresses it in yeah. English. Yeah. We're gonna so, let we're gonna ride him, ride this out. Yeah, yeah. We're not gonna ride him. We're gonna ride this <laughs> out. That's you said it, not me. Anyway. 天色也不晚了，我要回去了。那么在这里呢，我要跟大卫老师呢，用他的母语聊两句啊。Don't worry, English is coming. Hi, David. How are you, Mike? How's your holiday? Now watch your video. Uh, you know, I know you are a father. I'm a father. And I respect your preference of lifestyle. Okay, total respect. And I can understand why you why you think the Chinese one is better for you, obviously, because of the、uh, you know being comfortable, relaxation, so you don't care about freedom. You know what? I know someone who also have the same preference, and we call them pigs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta jump in there. Okay, good. It's it's true because. It's unfortunate that, that part was cut up, but the way he said it was, he literally said, "Like, what the hell is freedom? Who cares、right. about freedom? This freedom stuff's bullshit. I just want convenience. convenience, okay? And that is the most selfish thing you could ever、yes. say, yeah, right? Because he literally does not care about anyone having any freedom of speech or whatever, as long as he can get his food in、right. the middle of the night delivered、right. for like free. Right. That's all he cares、yes. about. Anyway, that's、uh, that's why he's being compared to a pig, right? Pretty much. You little piece of. <laughs> you're telling people, you're telling Chinese people who don't have freedom that freedom is shit. It's like telling people on the funeral that life is meaningless, life is shit, and deaths. We should celebrate the deaths of the people. Okay? Do you know how ridiculous that is? The piece of. <laughs> and、uh, your surname, I guess your surname is Gulasi, right? Gulasi, Mr. Gulasi. So I guess、uh, you or your your father or your grandfather、uh, were from Turkey, probably. So you're lucky to be born in Australia, okay? But there are a lot of other people who share the same ethnic origin with you, which are the Uyghurs. Millions of them are locked by Chinese government in those so-called schools for re-education. Do you know that? I believe you know that. Yeah, we got to come back in on this again. Sure.、Um, it is true.、Uh, Dave, David is Turkish,、mm -hmm. like he is. He's from his, you know, parents are from Turkey or、okay. wherever. It's like ancestry. So, this is a very good point that he's making here. Turkic people, Uyghurs.、Yes. The same people that are being locked up in, you know, the sort of re-education、mm -hmm. camps. You can call them what you want,、uh -huh. but they're just basically re-re-education、yes. camps, right?、Um, the same people that his. Ancestors come from,、um, and he's talking about oh, who gives a crap about freedom? And I, I've got to weigh in on this, right?、Mm -hmm. Nobody actually understands what freedom is until it's taken away. One hundred percent. And this is something that I can attest to myself. Something that's happened to me、mm -hmm. before. In South Africa, there was this one time where like the, a whole lot of shit happened, and I got taken and put in a holding cell for like a night. It's a good story. I'm gonna tell you. But the thing is, it was on a Friday. And the way the court system works there is, you get thrown in on Friday, you stay there until、mm -hmm. Monday, and then you get to go to the court, and they decide whether you did something wrong. They obviously released me straight away because I hadn't done anything、mm -hmm. wrong. It was a big misunderstanding. But the fact of the matter is, I had to stay an entire weekend in a holding cell with like a bunch of serious criminals, okay, like rapists and murderers and stuff, and that's South Africa.、Um, and it opened my eyes. You like, you think you're free. You think like you don't even think about it until you actually are not、mm -hmm. free. When you're stuck somewhere and you cannot break out of it, no matter、mm -hmm. what you do,、um, then you understand what freedom is. That's why I have such an issue, like a moral issue, with these a lot of Western YouTubers that say the whole Uyghur situation is bullshit、mm -hmm. and it's a domestic issue and nobody should like weigh in on it、mm -hmm. because. It's because you're not affected.、Yeah. You're, you're you and your families are not putting being put in re-education camps. Sure, you know what I mean. And it just happens with every single person.、It、happens with Chinese people、mm -hmm. all the time. They think everything's fine until something happens to them, and you know they get detained or someone they know gets detained. Then it hits home, and you're、mm -hmm. like, hang on a second, freedom is important. Right. But until then, you know, life's good. And this is actually something. That、uh, really resonates with the the feeling of Chinese people in general.、Mm -hmm. What he's saying, what、mm -hmm. David Gulasi was saying, like, what's freedom? Who gives a shit about freedom? Freedom is bullshit. Like, I can do what I want. I can have、it's, a comfortable life. It's playing into this whole very soft power CCP narrative right now. Is like,、mm -hmm. we're going to provide for you. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah. You may not be wealthy, 
but yeah. you're going to be totally fine. You don't have to worry about anything. The government's yeah. going to take care of you. And people have really gotten used to that idea. Yeah. And, and so like what he's saying, obviously it's rubbed off on mm-hmm. him living there. That attitude. Well, I think it's an echo and, chamber. Yeah, and of course he knows that he's going to get support by echoing that stuff. I really want people to watch the entire thing yeah. um, in your own free time after this because he goes in in Chinese and rips it apart. Yeah, as it's, a while it's important. Of these things. So, yeah. yeah, it's important. But we so, we got to hear we got to yeah. we got to hear his yeah, we'll, we'll, message. we'll hear his uh, his sign out here. Let's go for it. But you say nothing, and oh, I guess yeah, you have a school in China, right? I guess you lock your students up to teach them, to give them education, do you? Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad, you little piece of <laughs> Oh, I know you are, what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Oh, you kiss your mom with that mouth? No, I'm Chinese, remember? We don't kiss our mom or our mother-in-law, okay? So please don't do that. At least not behind your wife, okay? Don't do that. And you, you, Kiss your wife, Sammy. You kiss Ariel. You kiss your mother with that CCP ass kissing <laughs> hole on your face. Really? We all have children. We all have children. Okay? Don't let them be embarrassed by yourself. And stop using your kids if you really want them to have a happy childhood in Australia. Okay? You little piece of. What <laughs> oh, Happy New Year. <laughs> Have a very happy <laughs> kissing New Year. Thank you. A welcome home. <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> oh See, my God, legend. Okay, I, I really appreciate what this guy mm. uh, has to say, especially mm, me since too. he is a I Chinese actually Australian. Him because yeah, I was so yeah. inspired. I watched some of his other stuff too. Yeah. I mean, look, at the end of the day, if people watch us and when we talk about these these issues, it's very easy for people to say, Polarized look at these yeah. stupid white boys. They don't know what the hell they're talking mm. about. They're not Chinese. Um, you know, and it's very easy to say that and just dismiss what we have sure. to say. But when a Chinese person is saying it, someone who's obviously moved his entire family to for Australia a for a reason, then you have to take it seriously. Yes. Okay? You have to. He knows both sides. Straight from the horse's mouth. Mm. So I do suggest everyone to go follow the link and yeah. go give the guy a subscribe and, you know, basically, Check him out. yeah, take a look. The guy's awesome. He's um, seriously, seriously yeah. cool. And there's some other good content. He makes he, some good commentary as well. He was actually on the same beach. He went to the same oh, beach. Oh, yeah, that's the best part. <laughs> you can make us big now. Yeah, um, yeah. So I love this. In the beginning of the video, what you guys see when you go watch it later, yeah. he actually goes to where David Gulasi was. Yeah. And he's like, this is where he was standing. He went to the same beach. And he's like, how can he criticize this place? Exactly. You know? By the way, I have to tell you what's happening in the background. Mm. This is the Taiwanese um, National Day. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you can see it's got a Taiwan flag up in the corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the English vegetables over there behind we'll it. We'll explain that yeah, a we little will. bit later. But um, this is their National Day Parade. Mm. And later on, you'll see the Chinese National Day Parade in comparison. We apologize for the quality. Yeah. It was like recorded, obviously, off TV or something. Yeah. yeah. Hey, look at this. The Gaoliang Joe. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. Taiwanese Bai Joe. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, okay. Anyway. So that's uh, everything that's up with what's new. Somebody asked, what's the channel's, the guy's channel name? Just go in the description. It's, it's in the description. There. Yeah. It's, it's right like Sydney here. Baby or something. Right here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. Sydney Daddy, I believe. Sydney Daddy. Sydney Baby. Something. Okay. Uh, shall we mm-hmm. do some super chats? Yes, we shall. Uh, Mats Jada, as always, uh, stay awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Dion Chapman, again, always super happy to have you here. Uh, here's your regular super chat. <laughs> Thank you so much. By the way, what do you guys think of this pair-to-pair nude loan scandal? Will Chinese do anything for money? You've heard oh, about that, right? oh, the peer-to-peer loan? Yeah. That's very old, actually. Yeah, but it's more and more stuff keeps getting leaked from it, and it's like a constant like flow of these nude videos being sent Yeah, out. So, so basically, um, you'd get these... Mm-hmm. loan sharks yeah pretty much shadow banks peer-to-peer lending and you have students you know young female students mm-hmm. who need a loan and so they're like yeah sure we'll give you money but as collateral you have to send a picture of your id card mm-hmm. you have to be nude mm-hmm. and maybe or do a video. A, yeah, a video doing something showing your id national mm-hmm. id card and they have to read it out yeah it was a huge it was all over the news yeah. a couple of years ago but it's recently surfaced that more and more of this is happening mm. and what happens is they promise never to release them 
Yeah. And sometimes when they don't pay it up, they release them to scare off other people. Sure. But more often than not, they do pay back the loan and, and they then still all, release it. All, it all gets dumped in like a big, they sell it. Yeah. Right? To Chinese internet. It's not, so, like, porn's illegal. Yeah, yeah. So it's this like crazy new niche of porn for Chinese people. Sure. Exactly. Nuts. Yeah. It's, it's pretty despicable. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, next one. William Swenson, my first super chat. I can't think of anyone more deserving. Well, thank you very much, mate. Super appreciate that. That's it. Thank you. Okay, so now let's move on from what's new to our main segment, which of course is Soft Power Hour, where we talk about everything that China is trying to do to subvert your ideas and uh, make them look great. Mm -hmm. Did you run the clip? I did. Oh, okay, cool. I must have missed it. You did miss it. Um, You know, again, for all of you guys out there watching, you may not believe this, and this might seem very, very strange to some of you, but we're not anti-China, believe it or not. Do we even have to explain that? We do. We do. Okay. It, com- it does come across as if we're just like there to slag off China, but that's not the case. What we're trying to do is slag off the bad parts of what the government is doing, like all these sneaky little things that they try to pull all the time. Chinese people themselves contact us all the time, privately, and tell us what a good job we're doing. You know, after I read my student's letter, yeah. I got a ton of people that were like, I wasn't brave enough to tell you how I felt. And they sent me all these letters like to use in the future. It's and nice. I was like, thank it's you nice. so much. But like the Sydney daddy guy we just watched. Yeah. Those are the people that end up being our closest contacts because mm. they know what it's like. Yes. And something has happened to them or someone they know mm. because of the government. And it's easy to completely dismiss that. Yeah. If nothing has happened to you yet. Yeah, right? exactly. It's not out of scorn. It's out of reali- realizing. It's realization about the system that people have to live under. Yeah. And unless you've been bitten, you're going to think that we're pieces of shit. Yeah. Right? But yeah. someone like Sydney Daddy, he understands. He was there just like we were there. Of course. Right? Yeah. With it's, families. It's affected our lives and it's affected us in a big way. Why do you think we spend so much time in China if we didn't like it? Exactly. Of course. Ten- 14 and a half years of my life, a third of my life in China. Why would I do that if I hated the place? No, and there Why are would so I do many it? reasonable people yeah. there. Why would I do that if I didn't like the people? Of course, I absolutely love China, but I can't stand these horrible things that are going on. Right. I think a great recommendation is uh, Simon Yu's new video. I think you mm. guys should check that out as well. Yeah. I might pop that in later. Yeah, I think put that in the description. Okay. Anyway, Simon Yu's another mainlander who, you know, is really good. Okay, so now we're going to talk about our main thing, which is, of course, English vegetables. English vegetables. Um, for those of you who don't know, English vegetables in Chinese is ying wen cai. And <laughs> or cai yuan. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> the, the leader of uh, the new president, president of Taiwan yeah. is uh, cai ying wen. If you translate those characters, it literally means English vegetables. Well, I don't think the actual characters oh. are English vegetables, the, but the pinyin the, would be. Y, her yin, yin wen is. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, anyway, mm. long story short, she's the winner. Why don't you pop on uh, pop on the next slide there in the background? Okay, I will. Let's um, get ourselves in there. Okay, so this is going to be my segment today. Yes, go Winston for it. will come in with his Australian. I love Can monologuing. I monologue a lot. No, I'm not criticizing. I'm saying I, no, it's your turn. You are you are the Australia boy, mm-hmm. and I, I'll be the resident Taiwan expert. Okay? okay, go for it. So as you can see, we got three people on this list. Now this is before the election is over. So the first guy, he basically represents a party in Taiwan, and I have to explain this. Taiwan has a separate political system, a free democracy, mm. totally separate from the PRC from China. Yeah. They vote. They're very passionate, and they're the most functional democracy in Asia, even more so than than Japan. Right. Very passionate about this stuff. Mm -hmm. You have three basic parties. The first guy, the orange dude, this guy is part of a party that kind of believes that they should be reunified with China, Mm. no matter what, without sacrificing like Taiwanese rights, right? The second party, the traditional party, and the the one that you see on the flag of Taiwan, the Republic of China, is called the KMT or the Kuomintang. Now, Mm -hmm. they're the blue party. Sure. And they are pro-Taiwan, but also pro-reunification, but not under the CCP's government, sure. right? So someday we'll be reunified, but whatever. But yeah, they want to maintain status quo. Status quo. Yeah. The problem is a lot of them still have ties to the mainland because the KMT is founded by mainlanders that ran away to Taiwan. That's right. There were yeah. already Chinese people in Taiwan before the CCP took over. Yeah. There were still Chinese people, right? Absolutely. Now these mainlanders came over and they they kept the old government going, the nationalist government. Now the third one, and this is one that was never traditionally popular, and this is the DPP. This is the Democratic Progressive Party. Mm -hmm. She, uh, Tsai Ing-wen, was voted in uh, in the last term, and they believe in a Taiwanese identity. They want status quo in that they don't want war, but Taiwan is its own nation. It's not the Republic of China. It's just Taiwan. 
It's for Taiwanese people. They want everyone to learn English as well. They want to be part of the international community. They want every country to recognize them, not as part of China, but as Taiwan. Right. And that is the one that I would say most foreigners would definitely latch onto as well, because when、of、you course, go to、yeah. Taiwan, they do have their own identity. Absolutely、right? do. Yeah. She was poised to lose this term because the economy it didn't go down, but it didn't go crazily up, right?、Sure. So you get this、uh, the blue dude. His he's a、uh, Korean fish. Uh, <laughs> Korean fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What Korean, the hell? Korean English、fish. vegetables. <laughs> Korean you know, is greater than Korean fish. Yes.、Mm. So、uh, go vegan, apparently. Yeah. So Korean veg, or sorry, Korean fish. <laughs>、yeah. The second guy. Yeah. He was winning a lot of hearts and minds with promises of jobs and reigniting the economy, but there were a lot of ties、mm. to the mainland being found out. Of course. And a lot of KMT people that were in the pockets of the CCP, and guess what? He was on top of polls. For the longest time, yeah, and then China's nightmare happened. Hong Kong, see, Chi- yeah, China wanted orange or blue, lesser blue, yeah, to win.、Mm. They hate English vegetables so much. The last thing they want,、yeah. right, is Taiwan independence. Then they actually have to put their money where their mouth is and go invade. Yeah,、right? yeah. So he was poised to win, and then Hong, like you said, Hong Kong happened. Yeah. And that was the end. As soon as Taiwanese people saw what one party, two systems status quo looks like, yeah, she won by a freaking landslide. Fifty-seven percent. Show the next slide. Sure, let's get there. You know, that's the thing. Beijing has、right、been pr- approaching Taiwan for the longest time with this, like, look how successful Hong Kong's one party, two systems,、mm. one country, two systems works. They're like, look, Hong Kong people still keep their identity.、Mm. Everything's fine. They still have their own law, but they belong to China. And that's what we want to do with you, and so everyone was kind of on board for a while because it looked like Hong Kong was okay. But then, as soon as mainland decided, well, screw that, we're going to meddle with Hong Kong, we're going to break our promises. And then, when people started to rise up and you know say no, and then they started to get brutally suppressed, everyone's like, actually, take your one party, two systems setup and just shove it up your piss ass. Piss off, okay? Piss off, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Tsai Ing-wen's、uh, political campaign ads were some of the best I've ever seen from any country.、Mm. It was parallel shots of Taiwan、yeah. being all peaceful and stuff, and then Hong Kong. What was happening? These people are fighting for their freedom. We don't have to. We already have. Yeah,、it. we、Let's、already have our freedom. Yeah, and it really bolstered support. Even people that are deeply anti-green,、yeah. all voted green. Now this is an interesting map. You guys can learn a little geography here.、Mm. Where all it's green on the western side of Taiwan. That's where all the people live, right? It's like ninety、yeah. something. All the、percent. blue stuff's like mountains and、it's、crap. Mountains. No one can live there. It's、and、like ten people. It's indigenous. Yeah, like ten people in、it's、that entire part. Yeah, yeah, of course. But it's it's mostly indigenous people、mm. in these regions, and they typically vote blue.、Mm. There's a whole history behind that, but they vote blue because they'd rather have status quo than a new Taiwan identity where they feel like they lo- lose their indigenous identity. They feel like it's because on the they're on the side they can't see mainland China, so they don't know what's going on. <laughs> But the guys, the, they can actually look over and see. Hang on, we don't want that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they just hear tales. They hear yeah, tales, yeah, they're, and they're、yeah. like, "We、we'll、just vote blue." Yeah, exactly. Yeah.、Uh, and also, there,、uh, there's been reports of KMT people going for votes. So what they'll do is drive a bunch of, of beer and all that kind of stuff and drop it up. It's not considered bribery because it's like food and stuff. Sure, sure. But anyway, long story short, blue and green has been the rivalry, and green has never had the upper hand. But I, I have a little factoid for you guys. Yeah. Really funny. You know, in China, when you go to a wedding, what do people drink? Well, they drink well, Galian Zhou, whatever, or Baijiu. No, in or, China. Oh, in China, they drink Baijiu. Okay. Yeah. They drink Baijiu, or sometimes cognac. Yeah, yeah of course, XO.、Right. Like, sorry, you, you got、it. you you got me out there. Of course, they drink Baijiu, but if they want to be fancy and show off, they、mm. bring the really expensive Vsop. Yes. XO, which is fake most of the time, but you、oh, know they God, want to show off.、You. Like, look how. How like rich I am that I can get this expensive cognac from overseas. Yeah. Remember how much cognac I was sitting on. Oh yeah, for my wedding. Oh yeah, that was、crazy. real too. It's from Hong Kong. Oh nice. Very expensive stuff. Anyway,、mm. uh, that's just southerners showing off. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah, you know. I can't stand it because every time、like、you drink、it. cognac, no, but every time I drank it, it was fake. Oh yeah,、so、that'll ruin it for you. So cloyingly sweet and gross, and making me feel sick every time. I know what you so, mean because、yeah. it's the the additive stuff. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So. so in Taiwan, this is this is really funny. They also drink liquor at weddings,、mm-hmm. but. You know Taiwan is the biggest per capita Scotch consumer in the world. They love whiskey. They even、yeah. have their own whiskey. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah, good. It's so good. My、yeah. God, Taiwanese people know their booze. Yeah, Gaoliang Zhou sucks, by the way.、Oh, their、yeah. version of Bai Zhou. Anyway,、yeah. what they'll do is if the family is a DPP supporter, a Green Party supporter, they'll bring Johnny Walker Green label at all the tables. <laughs> 
And the other family, if they're if they're blue, they'll bring blue label. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? It I went to a really couple good. weddings where there are actually two families. Okay. And they're like competing basically. That's pretty hilarious. Anyway, long story short, she won by a landslide because, and I'm going to attribute this to the absolute ridiculousness uh, of the CCP's meddling in Hong Kong. Yeah. You don't want to be part of that system, and I think no. they've lost Taiwan forever. Yeah, seriously, For because. They just basically demonstrated exactly how they would run a one party, you know, two systems, a one country, two systems mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. which is poorly. They right. really did not deal with Hong Kong correctly. Mm -hmm. They could have de-escalated it straight away by mm -hmm. removing that stupid extradition bill, but rather they pushed it and pushed it because they're used to getting their way. Mm -hmm. In mainland China, if the, if the government says, this is how it is, that's how it is. And if anyone challenges them, they get locked up. Would you, would you say that I'm starting to believe that the CCP, the Communist Party of China, has drank its own Kool-Aid for too long. Absolutely. And it's actually believing its stuff. Yes, 100%. Remember when they actually had the, the news broadcast for CCTV and they were like, look, the, they had, we gave them elections, Hong Kong got to vote, and obviously they're pro-Beijing. The silent minority that they, they yeah. keep smashing down. Yeah. Overwhelmingly pro-democracy. This is something I wanted to talk about is you had those like little regional mm. elections in Hong Kong and of course... Um, the, the pro-democracy people won by a landslide. Yes, you like see, this. the same in Taiwan. And the first thing the, the CCP put out, they said that there's so much corruption mm. in the elections in <laughs> Taiwan. That's why they won. It's because of meddling and right. corruption. Because they can't handle the truth. Because they've never been in a position where they've actually allowed people to vote for what they want. Mm -hmm. And Chinese people haven't been in that position mm -hmm. to ever vote. They don't understand how it works. So it's kind of like when you have an overbearing parent that tells you what you have to study at school, what, what career you have to have. You go along with it and you feel like, well, my parents love me. I'm just going to do it anyway. You've never had the opportunity to ever be like, oh, I can choose between math and art. I can actually choose. Mm -hmm. No, you have to do math. Mm -hmm. You know, And that's the thing. So the parents are like, okay. You know, let's just give them a choice. You can choose between math and art. Don't worry, they're going to choose math. They know it's better for them. They choose art. They're like, what? <laughs> no, you're taking math. Screw uh, that art thing. You know, that was just a bluff. You're not allowed to have that. Right. And That's you know how it's happening. You know how they had that already prepared. Like, if they were literally believing yeah. that they were going to be like, see, they yeah. voted for Beijing. Yeah, they, they kept pushing this narrative that there's a silent majority, like you said. The silent majority of Hong Kong people are pro Beijing. I couldn't believe they believe that. Especially since like the like a huge segment of the like population the marched the on the street saying like no, and they're still like no, the silent majority. Yeah, right. bullshit. Yeah, bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> the silent majority were all pro democracy, and they right. proved it. Well, I was I wanted to bring that up because um, you can go to the next slide yeah, real sure. quick. Mm -hmm. um, I'll bring up the candidate smugs again. All right, let's do it. So um, come on, it's getting. I know. There. I'm not saying you. you I'm you saying can, you computer. Can, you can talk in the meantime. Okay. Yeah. So they were like the entire year, China, of course, they try to get inside this Taiwanese election. It's a big deal for them because they can't lose face. They always said the day that Taiwan declares formal independence is the day we go in with the tanks and we liberate Taiwan and we bring it back to the mainland. They've been saying that since Mao days. Yeah. They have all this propaganda about like the long lost sister <laughs> across the straits you know what I yeah mean? exactly and this has always been a political feature of every leader of china <laughs> the problem is Tsai Ing-wen came out after the election and she goes oh don't worry we already declared independence like where are you basically yeah, exactly <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. Yeah. and they're like no they, they still haven't formally done it she's like no we're an independent nation you have to deal with it now yeah you i know? mean they have been for how how long how can you not be independent if you have your own government currency government yeah. judicial system past trade trade ties trade you know, ties international indus relations industry, industry brands yeah yeah so it's just that one of those things yeah uh so to wrap this up Throughout the year, uh, mainland China has been running articles about um, they they knew James Song wasn't going to win, but yeah. running articles about how um, Korean Fish, the yeah. Blue Party guy, was winning hearts and minds around, and it's going to improve ties to China. Mm. And they were writing so many articles like absolutely Tsai Ing-wen is going to lose. They were a hundred percent sure she was going to lose, and here we are again, egg on face. Yeah, freedom that, prevails. That's the thing. If if the Chinese people had a chance to actually vote, they would probably not be choosing what the CCP tells them to no, choose. No. And this is proof of it because 
these are Chinese people, Chinese speaking people of Chinese ethnicity with Chinese culture and everything, and they have a working functioning democracy. So all these people who keeps like going on about the fact that, oh, it, it would never work in China. No, Chinese culture and history has always been this way and mm. Chinese people can't really have a democracy, etc. I hear this argument all the time from mm pro Beijing mm. Chinese people. They're like, mm. oh no, this is the way it works for Chinese people. You wouldn't understand. That's a bunch of BS because here you have Chinese people running their own democracy and it's like the best democracy in Asia. It's one of our favorite countries in the world. It's amazing. It's so it's good. Ama it's an amazing place and you get to see it operate when you're there. You like analogies, right? Yeah. I, I have an analogy for you. Sure. My father-in-law said this without, I mean, I found so many political implications what he said, but he didn't. Yeah. Obviously, he was just telling a story. But when he was forced to go to Hainan Island and work on a coffee plantation from Chairman Mao, yeah. every day they ate hot rice porridge in like 40 degree heat, which is like 105 degree heat, right? Yeah. And it was obviously gross, but it was all they got. So you'd get a bowl and he said the trick was it would be so hot and you'd just like take little slurps and it was the best part of the day because you got to eat. Sure. It was this gross porridge, but it was the most delicious thing to him in the world mm. until he left and went back to Guangdong as an adult finally with a yeah. teaching job where he could finally taste meat mm -hmm. and finally have different kinds of vegetables and stuff. And that was the greatest experience he's ever had. Sure. Even called, he used like words in Chinese, like, oh, look at that. It was such a cute piece of pork. Like it was, <laughs> right, the yeah. memories are so powerful sure, for him. Sure. So if you don't know any better, mm. you're not gonna, you don't have no choice, right? Sure. You're still gonna enjoy or promote what you have. Yes, yeah. I want that rice porridge, right? Yeah, yeah. But if you gave a menu, a political menu with options on it to, to Chinese people, let them sit on it for a couple of years, you damn right sure they would choose something else. Absolutely, they would. You know? yeah. yeah, they would. Anyway, this is just a, it's a fantastic... Like congratulations said, it's, to Taiwan. It's democracy hits back, you know. We it's, love you, It's Taiwan. really fantastic. And the biggest congratulations to all of my Taiwanese friends. I already did congratulate a lot of them on uh, Instagram. And I do have a lot of Taiwanese friends. And I've mentioned it before, but I actually, the first... Asian people I ever met growing up were Taiwanese right. and the first actual Chinese friends I ever had were Taiwanese and the strongest and best Chinese friends I have are Taiwanese still are to this day so I mean it's just the way it is I, I come from a background of knowing Taiwanese people yeah and I'm married to a Chinese person and I have Chinese family too but you know I really get along with Taiwanese people fantastic they're so cool yeah. and uh, can I throw in one more thing sure. about English vegetables yeah her English is impeccable <laughs> what yeah. about Xi Jinping yeah, I don't know if he can speak, say anything. He doesn't speak the world's language, huh? Yeah, I, he doesn't have to, though. He yeah, believes well, China. he should. Yeah. Now we're going to move on to Australia. This is this is your gig. Okay, um, I, I came across this just the other day. Um, Victoria, you know, Victoria is a state in Australia. Mm -hmm. Melbourne um, is in Victoria. I think everybody knows Melbourne, yeah, right? It's, it's like one of the, one of the cities, bigger yeah. cities. One of the, the, the I three. believe it's the biggest city, right? I don't one know. Of, it's one of them. Sydney or Melbourne, hmm. one of the two. Um, sorry <laughs> to you Australians, you'll correct us down there. Anyway, the thing is, um, the state premier, which is kind of like a state governor, hmm. right? He's in charge of the state, has been found to be taking trips to China, taxpayer paid trips to go have meetings behind closed doors. And he actually signed an agreement um, a memorandum of understanding that they would join the Belt and Road Initiative. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell everyone a little bit quickly what the Belt and Road Initiative is? Imperialism. It Basically, is. what it is is uh, China's sitting on a bunch of money, and they've lost traditional influence throughout the world, especially mm -hmm. like after Mao took over. Yeah. He, he made an isolationist policy. Mm -hmm. So all this like kowtowing to emperors and stuff, those days were done. Yeah. And they lost all world influence. Everyone's like, oh, China. That's why you have all those things like when my mom was growing up. Hey, there's starving kids in China. Finish that, you know. Sure. That, those phrases didn't exist before, right? This is when China closed itself off. So under the new leadership, they came up with this idea. They're like, you know what? We got money now. We can bring back this old school like China's the center of the world power, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So what they did was they found a bunch of countries with either corrupt governments or uh, very weak weak governments, I should say. Do you want a bunch of money? Do you want some ports? Do you want some ships? Do you want some roads? Do you want some trains? We got it. Signed their souls away, basically, on these 99-year leases. Mm -hmm. So you got countries bordering China. You got Tajikistan, all that kind of stuff. You got Pakistan. And they're under these agreements, Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. under these agreements that, listen, we're going to give you all this infrastructure, Chinese-made. We're going to bring Chinese workers into your country. And we're going to support your local economy. But if you can't pay it back, that port's ours, yeah. right? And this is a, a way to get military influence around the world, economic influence. They're trying to create this string of pearls, as they say, yeah, ar around the sea and then go inland all the way to Europe with all these railroad networks and stuff, right? Sure. 
Long story short, countries have to sign on to this, obviously, and allow China into their country. That's what the Belt and Road is. Yeah, the problem is it's a lot of it's lies and deception. Yeah. As Africa especially has been finding out. See, they'll come along and say, we're going to invest in infrastructure in your country. Mm -hmm. We're going to create jobs, right? It's going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. And we're going to give you a massive loan as well of money, you know. So they're like, hell yeah. And they come in. But guess what? They don't create jobs because they give all the jobs to Chinese migrant workers. So they're like, yes, we're going to build a railroad. But guess what? We're not actually going to hire any local laborers. All of a sudden, they just fly in thousands of Chinese migrant workers. They set up infrastructure for the Chinese migrant workers. The Africans just get to kind of like wallow in filth while the Chinese you know, migrant workers get all the work, get all the money, which they take back to China with them. So it's a win-win situation for China. And then it ends up with like crappy infrastructure being in the country, which falls apart, which doesn't get maintained. It's rubbish. Or if it's good, it's because it's something that China wants to use. So it'll be like a deep water port, which they can then use for their shipping in the future because they know that the, the loans are going to be defaulted on and then they can seize that asset. You know, when you said the uh, infrastructure is all for Chinese people. Yeah. I want it to people. This is an interesting tidbit that me and you found out. Yeah. It goes way deeper than just sending some construction guys with hard hats. Yeah. There's micro economies to literally to the bottom of humanity yeah. right so where we're eating barbecue mm -hmm. in china was it last year or something yeah and we're sitting down and we're listening to a group of women talk and they were talking about how she was so lucky that she got to go to africa for a year and she got paid quite a bit to work on a construction site brothel yeah yeah and now she's back here and how they only serviced Chinese men. And we were Absolutely. listening to this conversation, and we're like, oh my gosh, this goes down to that level. I mean, you know when they recently uh, busted, not that recently, about two or three years ago, they busted that Kenyan restaurant. Mm. The Chinese restaurant would not serve black people. Right. Uh, you know, no black people were allowed on premises after like 5 p.m. or something. And this is in mm. Kenya, by the way, all right? And it only serviced Chinese people. So only Chinese people were allowed in there. And then... It turns out they had like a brothel operating out, operating out the back as well for Chinese people only with Chinese prostitutes and everything. So they do set up a like a little micro economy, which excludes the rest of the yeah. country. Yeah. So these Belt and Road Initiative people that get sucked into this get screwed over royally because they are naive and they don't know who they're dealing with. They do not understand just how crafty and ingenious these little um, uh, schemes set up by the Chinese government are. And it's all about take, take, take and give nothing back. I'm not going to disagree with you, but I will. I'm going to throw in a different opinion on that. Sure. I don't think it's naivety for the most part. I think Western Westerners have that issue. Mm. Right? Yeah, Westerners are naive as all hell. The problem is when you go to a place mm. like Tajikistan, mm. right? Or Turkmenistan is a good example. So yeah. One party state, right? You go in there and the leadership doesn't care about what's going to happen in 99 years. Do you think yeah. he actually cares? He just wants another palace for his family sure. and cronies. Sure. Right. Same with Africa. It's, it's selfish. Yeah, it's all the the crony dictators. And, yeah, yeah. So they're like tw for twenty years, I'm going to be a multimillionaire. I'll, yeah. I'll take it. True. Right. They Indeed. don't. They're not thinking about the future of their country. That's also very true. Anyway, so now uh, let me pull up this little. Uh, I, I've got some notes here. Let's sure. go find him. This guy's name is Daniel Andrews. Is the state premier of uh, Victoria? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's he, like a governor, basically. Yeah. He's he's the bad guy in okay. this scenario. So what he's done is he's gone and signed agreements with you know chinese officials that in china right in china mm -hmm. that he his state victoria state will be a part of the belt and road initiative wow yeah and he's actually gone ahead and signed in a free country in a free country and apparently that's not his place to do so it's no. supposed to be like the federal government is right. supposed to do this not the state governor so he's kind of gone above their heads to do this and in october of 2019 he signed an agreement to proceed with the belt and road initiative um and he's very uh, obscure about the wording here. And he's like, oh, it's going to create jobs and it's going to create, you know, yeah, good sure economic things and friendship and ties. And, you know, using Didn't he use like rhetoric. harmony and friendship and all yeah. those words. Yeah, yeah. Trust, mutual, mutual understanding. Mutual understanding. How many times you heard that? Yeah, Chinese? exactly. So he's started, he's increased his CCP rhetoric. And uh, he's basically signing Victoria or has signed Victoria over to this Belt exploitative Road. Belt and Road Initiative, which at the end of the day is only going to hurt the local Australian people in Victoria. It right. cannot actually help them. This is terrifying, mm. and I'll, I'll put it to you this way. I don't care about economic... I, I care about economic freedom. I think every country should be able to do whatever they like. Mm. I believe in economic freedom and economic um, interaction. Yeah. I don't believe in immoral interaction, like if something exploits something else, sure. right? That being said, if some if country wants to trade with another country, that's fine, right? Yeah. The issue I have with this is the Belt and Road Initiative is signing off 
your future freedoms in this area. Yeah. And you are not asking the people whether you can do that or not. This The, the way that this has kind of happened has been so underhanded and mm-hmm. behind closed doors mm-hmm. and whatnot that the the local, the public in Australia actually were kind of not aware of what's going on. Right. And so now they, uh, this guy who I've been speaking to, the guy who's organizing this event, his name is um, Morgan, mm-hmm. right? Morgan J. And he had another event and he told me the first event that they had when they first brought this to light, what really surprised them is the majority of his supporters that came up to like hold placards and stuff were Chinese Australians. As they should be. They yeah. understand. Why Why would you leave China and move to another country? Yeah, unless, like the Sydney daddy guy. Yeah. Right? Why would you do that unless you saw some deep, deep flaws in the country that you came from? Mm-hmm. You know, there's no reason to leave. No. Uh, I mean, other than perhaps like a shining opportunity to make money sure, or something. Sure, sure. But the majority of people who actually immigrate, as in pick up their families and move to mm. another country, they do it because they need to get away from something that really disagrees with them, right? Yeah. So that's why so many Chinese Australians came to help him and they were holding up the placards and they were his biggest supporters, mm-hmm. strangely enough. Not the local, no. normal, everyday kind of good day, mate, crocodile Dundee looking a lot, dudes. A lot of them don't understand what's happening. No, they're too bloody naive. They just leave the government stuff to the government. They don't realize their government is selling the country out from under them. All of their water rights, all of their ports, all of their everything is being sold to China. Like I said, for a long time, Australia already belongs to China. It I know. does. And this goes so much further mm. than econ- economic cooperation. Yeah. You are talking about capitulating and giving rights of future rights to a communist dictatorship yeah. that bullies and tortures its own people and strips away the rights of other countries it deals with. And you want to be friends? You want to be friends, friends with them? You want to, yeah. In 50 years time, if this continues, you won't be able to say anything about the CCP if it's still around in Australia. Yeah. You M- better believe Mutual it. understanding. So you're just going to mutually understand how they break all the human rights and, you know, Re- that kind of nonsense. Rewind to the, the 40s, right? Hmm. What if you had a country, right? A Western country. Let's, let's say England, yeah. right? And let's say no one ever went to war with Germany, right. right? All of a sudden, England is now allowing massive cooperation with Nazi Germany to like completely remold the infrastructure within England and then yeah. start changing its laws. Yes, and also basically saying, okay, you know, uh, Piccadilly Circus now belongs to right. the Reich. Right, and there's like know? a huge swastika. Yeah, there. and it's like this is now the Reich's right. property because they're creating some jobs for us. Right. Or like Canada in the 80s is like Soviet Union, come on over here. You can just you can just have everything now. Yeah, you can have Vancouver because it's right. going to belong to China sure. anyway in a sure. couple of years. So, you know, you have it first for a bit. <laughs> you're next, you're next on the list, Canada. In fact, you're worse than Australia in a lot of ways. But anyway, yeah. um, this is really quite ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and there's something you can do about it if you're Australian. Um, there's a stop the sale of Victoria protest, basically, which will be happening at Parliament House in um melbourne and it's hosted by this guy and a chinese woman right yes um so hosted by morgan and uh, fiona huay and i think you should go and take a look we've put the link to the facebook event down below so if you're australian and you care about your country and you don't want to see your country um be sold even further to china go voice your opinion You have an opportunity, and that's what democracy is all about. That's what having freedom of speech is all about. Don't let the CCP take it away. If you're not going to actually allow yourself to take advantage of being a free country, then you may as well not have freedom. Yeah, fair enough. If I was Australian right now, I'd be going. Of course. I'd be the first one on those steps. Yeah. You know, early morning. Right. Yeah, with a Winnie the Pooh t-shirt. (laughs) <laughs> or maybe one of these to hide your identity <laughs> yeah yeah you could hide your identity yeah. with the Winnie the Pooh mask okay cool anyway we've said enough about this but please go check it out the link is below it, the guy is doing something which is courageous and it's necessary mm. yeah absolutely necessary so that's pretty much everything for uh, oh yeah we shouldn't be showing that just yet let's, uh, let's <laughs> teaser yeah we'll go oh, you guys yeah. enjoy this mil- it's military parade yeah you see the difference between the national days there <laughs> Um, anyway, yes. um, uh, let's see some super chats. Yeah. Uh, Zachary C said, I wanted to toss you guys a few bones to encourage the good work you do. I want to say the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act will be put through the U.S. and Senate soon. Will it help Hong Kong? Symbolically, yes. Yes. Um, in reality, not so much. Look, it does give some hope to the people. And it spreads awareness. Yeah. You have to understand just how many 
people are putting their their livelihoods on the line being a part of those protests mm-hmm. you know yeah. it's a difficult thing to do oh yeah especially with so many people trying to pull them down and label them as being bad mm. actors and you know they're causing all this trouble meanwhile most of them aren't there are right. a couple of bad eggs and there are a couple of plants that are doing bad things and the police are being absolutely awful right. and it's just one of those things so the courage to continue to stand up and make your voice heard is it's insurmountable mm. because of all the odds that are against you yeah and when you hear that you have the backing of something like this uh this democracy and freedom mm. act uh, being put through the u.s senate it gives you hope right you know it does and it's something that is so important. it's important it's super important it is important yeah uh, Jeremiah Johnson said, uh, good to have you guys back. Love the new channel. How strict are car emissions in China? How's the registration process? They seem restrictive, but China seems not to care in other energy sectors. That's damn well sure. Yeah, look, I had to get my car um, smogged in China every mm-hmm. two years. Mm-hmm. Um, Same. And you'd have to, it's the worst thing you've ever done in your life because you have to go to the... They always have those testing stations mm-hmm. in like some shit You area. have to go outside the yeah. city. And so time. you have to drive really far. And every time you get there, there's at least like, I don't know, 30 oh, cars it's a in whole front day of you. Yeah, so you have to spend a whole day. Uh. And you sit there for two hours or whatever just to, till your car gets tested. They run it on a dyno with a sniffer up the exhaust pipe and you're done. You That's know, what? you get your Liu Biao. It's called a Liu Biao. Yes. Green green badge or whatever. Or you can just pay a couple hundred bucks. Yes. Or like everyone else does. Just buy that. You, you know, um, I did it. The, the legit way for the first couple of mm. uh, years, right? Because mm. I, I drove for over 10 years mm. in that little car, right? And it was such a laborious process. So I was with my friend and he was also a car, a car guy. He just got his car. And I, he was like, yeah, it's time for me to do my, my green sticker, my green badge. And I'm like, yeah, what a bullshit process. And he's like, no, it's not. There's, just go to the local car wash over here and the guys who detail your cars or whatever, pay them 200 bucks to yep. do it for you. Yep. I'm like, Really? So like yeah, and true true to true to the fact, like two hundred RMB, you go you leave your car. It's not so they, a secret. People thought we were yeah. dumb for doing it legitimately. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean they did Our motorcycle dealership didn't smog our bikes. No, they didn't. Anyway, so they but the, to be fair, with these guys, you paid them the two hundred, they took my car somewhere. I don't know where. I mean, obviously not to the normal station because that's too much of a hassle. So they probably have a friend who's got a little thing that's tied to the system somehow. So they took my car somewhere and they bought it back the same afternoon with the green sticker done. 200 RMB, which is how much in US dollars? Uh, it's like, I don't know, 30 bucks. 30 bucks, yeah. Done. So yeah. don't need to waste a whole day. Just pay the car wash guys. And for those of you maybe claiming that we might be out of touch, I have recently been talking to my car buddies in China and it's still exactly the same. Of course. I mean, that's something... And if, yeah. if not, there's more places now to do yeah. that. Yeah, of it's course. Hilarious. Yeah, that's one of the things. Look, another thing that's been uncovered, and if you watch that Under the Dome documentary mm, that was made, banned, right? um, yeah, that got banned, you could see it there. But something that we always knew all along is that the emissions stickers on the car saying Euro 3 standard or whatever are fake. Yep. Oh, Remember yeah. our motorcycles. Oh, Dude. man. So, you know, you've got these emissions systems. So you have an EGR valve and you have a, a charcoal canister mm. and it's supposed to, you know, um, Go through. soak up the, the evaporated Before gases and stuff. Yeah. yeah. They were fake. Mm. Literally just a piece of plastic. You pull it off, it's blocked off. both. It's a molded, closed-off piece of plastic that just gets put on there <laughs> so it looks like it's there. Oh, we were The charcoal dying. canister was empty. There's nothing inside. That was usually on our... Chinese branded bikes. Yeah. But wasn't it on some of the Suzuki's as well? The thing is, it was on the Chinese branded bikes, but they had the sticker to say that they met the emissions. Yeah. And yeah. even in the books and the registration, it said past emissions. Yeah. But the yeah, emissions, yeah, yeah. all of the emissions. That's on an industrial was, scale. It was fake. And we've got footage of that. Uh, we should dig it up so we, we can show it. It's up. like, what the hell? Like, even the pipes that are supposed to go into the just, end, just a piece of solid yeah, metal. Solid, yeah. There's solid, no, right, it's yeah. not a pipe. Yeah. Oh, so it's, funny. Yeah. So the emission stuff's a joke. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, Jieli Bai mm-hmm. uh, says, just left Wuhan a week ago to come back to the States. Glad to be done teaching English at a university there. The education system there and way administration operates is ridiculously inefficient. You're telling me I was in the university system for like five years. It's insane. Nothing gets done there. No. It's no. crazy. If you are a hardcore educator, someone who really believes in, in educating people, you're going to be sorely disappointed if you work in China because it goes against everything that you believe in and the way you you believe you should be teaching people right mm. abzu says you're my favorite same-sex couple on youtube twice so i <laughs> okay. appreciate that does that mean it negates it it's one of those things like if you say it enough times then it becomes true maybe according to someone like that maybe it's a hope yeah 
I'll do one more. <laughs> World Traveler Dongbei says, just wanted to say hello to Wang Yong. That was my first Chinese name on my Chinese driver's license. All right. Because I didn't have one. Yeah, and that's right. Was, he's Yong. like, you're brave to do this test in China. King of bravery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny as all hell. Uh, okay, cool. I guess we'll, we'll move on to the yeah. next one. Our next one, of course, is Guanxi Corner, where we talk about relationships. It could be romantic. It could be business. It could, you know, have anything to do with relationships with uh, Chinese people. Okay. Okay. Hello, I had a quick question for you guys. There's no name here. My wife is finally interested in me moving out to China. Lived there from 2014 to 2015, doing the English teacher life, lol. Mm. But as we now have a sub two-year-old daughter, or to toddler, I'm sorry, I just want to get some insights as to how safe it is for an American toddler as well as the quality of like doctors and checkups. I realize this varies per area. I was thinking more specifically, I'll blank out the, the location. Is it's fairly close to Shanghai and a bunch of other stuff. And the pay is great enough for me to save it for my family's future. I know you guys are probably getting bombarded with work, especially video editing. Uh, anytime you can allot to me is immensely appreciated. Um, I don't know if we should blank out the area. It's pretty okay, broad. Hangzhou yeah, slash Suzhou. Yeah, okay. Cool. We know that area yeah. well. It's okay. near Shanghai. Okay, so uh, I'm going to let you start with some of your experiences mm. raising a daughter because your first daughter was, born, was in born in China and stayed there for, what, a year, two years? Two, two and a half years. Two and a half, okay, so maybe you can say some of the things you came across. So if I had a choice, which I didn't at the time, mm. I would have never let my daughter uh, be born in China mm. uh, because of the complications that happened to our friends. I made a whole video about it. it says why I won't have a kid in China. Mm. Watch that first. Mm. Um, but even with our connections and the amount of money we paid to do it, you know, really well in, in the city we were living in. Yeah. <clears throat> it was just one of those situations where when there's not soap in the bathrooms in a hospital mm. and the abortion ward is next to the delivery ward and everything is filthy, and there's like t like people hacking up tuberculosis lungs in the wing, like where your baby's about to come out. Yeah. And the delivery room in this fancy hospital has like 12 screaming bloody women in it, and you have sure. absolutely no privacy. When they miss like where they put your epidural in, all of these things piled up, like I would have never, ever had done that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There was no way we could have gotten like Vivi's immigration stuff done that quickly, so there's no way we could have done it. Yeah. Um, I would say, for, especially for future checkups, the doctors that we dealt with, even the what, family friends and all these people that we trust, inept. I'm sorry to say this. Sure. Absolutely inept. Like sometimes smoking, you know, in the in their office. Sure. Like not even looking at you. The lack of privacy. You've always got someone yeah. in the door. Someone in there. In, yeah. yeah. And they just, I mean, if you're talking mm. about like a broken arm, yeah, maybe. Mm. But if you're talking about stuff where you're concerned, like can we get this blood work done to see if those vaccines were real? And they're like, eh, blah, and nobody cares about anything. Well, when it comes, I would say no. I when wouldn't it comes do to it. blood work, in China, I find it a lot more efficient. Okay. Because, well, it's quicker. Because I find here in America, you get your blood work done in the lab. You have to wait a day or two mm. before you even get the results. If you do, it mm. takes a while. In China... You do the blood work. It's like you go to a little ATM type machine. Mm -hmm. you, you put in your ID number and you get the results mm -hmm. like straight away. Like that kind of thing's more efficient. But that being said, the way it's done is in like a hectic environment, chaotic with a lot of people everywhere. The nurses aren't wearing gloves. I've got video footage of myself getting a blood drawn and an injection. The nurses. If you work in China, you get blood drawn so many times. Yeah, it's crazy. It's insane. Um, what anyway, about no, fake, my, what my, about the fake vaccines? That's though? what I said. Yeah, I know, but like, what about that? Because Isn't that a big thing? Yes, it is a huge thing, and that's obviously like flip my flip my lid, right? And has it happened only once? Twice. Yes. Right. So, um, mm. it turns out she didn't, but we had to fight so hard to get those lab results because the doctors like, we Yeah, they we they don't, don't want to lose face, and they right. don't want the chance that it actually. Right. was fake. They don't want that to come to light. So right. they'd rather not even approach right. the subject. And so many times you're like, I mm. think there's an issue here. And they're like, eh, it's fine. Totally fine. May went to uh, yeah. me It's yeah. always this very like blase attitude to the point where I question their ability to be doctors. Yeah. Uh, I have to be completely honest with you too. I think Chinese doctors, and I'm not talking about my wife here. You're a great doctor. You're fantastic. But like Chinese doctors <laughs> in general. No, seriously. Yeah. They, I met a couple good ones. You know what they rely on the most mm. is the human body's ability to heal itself. That's what they do. They're basically like, they'll take your pulse. They'll be like, yeah, just don't have cold food and you'll be, you'll be okay. Drink hot water, you know, and go, go take some antibiotics. Done. They give me antibiotics for a broken knee. Yeah. One time I got really sick and I didn't know what it was. And they said it was because I ate too many hot foods. What? You know what I mean? Like, 
Are you kidding me? Yeah. So I have a migraine headache and like I'm I have diarrhea for a week. It's because I ate too many rich foods. Cheats, I rich. They're like you ate fried food, didn't you? And I was like, I don't know. Yeah, they're like you you eating barbecue. Maybe it's true though, because a lot of the barbecue will give you like a bad stomach. Of course. Mm. Like here's but yeah. Here's yeah, the yeah. bottom line. You think that you're gonna go to China with your family so you can save some money um, right. for your family's future. Right. I would say that your family's health is more valuable than that money. That you, you have to weigh that yourself. Yeah, that's something you to have me. to look at. Um, things like, especially Hangzhou and Suzhou during the winter time, it's unbearable, the quality of the air because mm. of the factories nearby and the winters are harsh. Uh, asthma is very common amongst kids, you know, things like that. So just bear this in mind. You're taking a big risk and a lot of people don't seem to understand this because China has beautiful skyscrapers, modern infrastructure, a massive economy, it's on the world stage, but at the same time, they're not up to scratch when it comes to everything else. Drinking water, yeah. food safety, you can't, doctors, You can't drink medicine. the water there at no. the tap, right? Um, you know, like this new SARS thing that just broke out in China? Trying to cover it up. Yeah, they tried to cover it up. And I had an argument with my wife about this because um, she was like, no, everybody knew straight away. I was like, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. She's like, yeah, well, her doctor group knew straight away. And I'm like, how does that help? Maybe you did, but maybe you didn't. You don't know. I think you only found out when like the truth came out anyway. Because yeah. you couldn't keep it under wraps anymore. The yeah. swine flu epidemic that happened with the pigs, they kept that under wraps so long that it spread so bad that it like, affected half the pigs in the country. If they were upfront about this stuff and like, hey, listen. People could have been proactive. This shit's real. Yeah. yeah people could have stopped it from spreading. And, you know, my Edu wife. Educate the farmers. My, my wife's response was. And legitimately, this is what all Chinese people would say is like, oh, they just didn't want people to panic. So they didn't want to prematurely Social release order. release this um, information. I say bullshit to that, to be honest. I think yes. if if there's a freaking bad unknown respiratory disease that's cropping up, you let everyone know to take care so they don't go walking around in the market, sniffing the pork and spitting on the floor and stuff. They got to know to just be careful and cautious. That and... Education could have prevented the spread if they nipped this in the bud right in the yeah. beginning. They're like, listen, people of China, there is this pork swine flu epidemic going on, right? Yeah. If you raise pigs, this is what you need to do, yeah. right? You need to coordinate them. Nope. Shh. Not allowed to talk about it. Now we have yeah. to bulldoze 50% of all pigs in yeah. the fire pits. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know? it's the truth. Uh, actually, you know, when SARS broke out, the original SARS, it was a similar situation because what happened was... Mainland China had been keeping wraps on it. And it was only when a doctor yeah. went to Hong Kong for a wedding and died of this mysterious disease and it started to spread. And it actually spread in a building where the guy was staying. He was taking a shit on the toilet and it went through the entire toilet system and people were picking it up from the sewage system in the building. You know, and because Hong Kong is like switched on when it comes to these kind of diseases, bam, bam, bam. they have like a special quarantine hospital and everything. They took care of it and they spread awareness. And they were honest about it. This came from mainland China. Guangdong. We don't even know how many people died of it in rural villages and stuff or what happened there. It was only ever discovered when, you know, an infected person went to Hong Kong. And that's, this, this ties mm. into the whole problem mm. with CCP leadership. This yeah. is why we don't hate China, yeah. but we hate the Chinese government because people die and suffer every time something happens because they don't want to lose face or power. Yeah. They care more about their few party leaders mm. and their wealth and their assets abroad. And their face. Their, and their face more than their own people. They will, that sucks. they will literally have everybody dying around them and say, look how bad America is because, yeah. you know... That's preferable to them. Yeah, because uh, guns or something. <laughs> you know, they will have something like literally making videos showing people how crappy America is and how amazing China is while people are dying of medieval level diseases. And meanwhile, meanwhile, you have people mm. like us talking about this. It's yeah. such a joke, this medieval disease. It's amazing yes. that this exists. Yeah. But, they had the plague they, in <laughs> China. They had the plague, the bubonic marmots, plague, because they ate someone brains. ate like a raw marmot, yeah. you know? Anyway, yeah, my point sorry. is, people like us <laughs> that want to talk about this, it hurts our feelings when people are affected in this country mm. because their government doesn't care about them. I don't think my government cares about me either. Yeah. But there's a system in place to allow for a society to operate. Yeah. And when you throw a blanket over your society and tell them everything's fine mm. and then some of them die and they're not allowed to talk about it and they're not allowed to complain or post about it online or on WeChat or whatever and other people die yeah. as a knock-on effect, that's pretty messed up. It's messed up. And that's what we hate. And then we get blamed for being anti-China. And then, anti we, get, and then <laughs> we get blamed. <laughs> because unfortunately, um, if we talk about these things, it does shine a light on the things 
that are bad in China. Right. And so it does make China look bad. Right. Because China tries to have the squeaky clean image all the time. Right. You know, it's... I'm trying to think of an analogy here, but it's like the most evil, horrible, disgusting pervert who pretends to be a priest or something, and he's all clean cut and everything, and he just doesn't want anyone to find out about what he does. But yeah. someone like points a finger at him and says, "This guy's molesting little boys," and he'll be like, "You are the devil. You're the antichrist. And you know? he you're ramps you're against up. Christianity." Everyone that wasn't affected is yeah. like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Prof- he's, look at this Pastor guy. John's great." Yeah, look at this. Terrible, like, Satanists, let's burn them at the cross right, or whatever. Right, you know? so, That's a decent idea. Yeah, yeah, something along those lines. So, yeah. yeah. And, and I just, that's what hurts our feelings, yeah. to, to sum this up, is when the people that think we're doing a disservice to China, yeah. we're literally talking about the cases that affect the innocent people in your country, and you yeah. just haven't been bitten yet. Yeah. And when you do, you will. you will understand what we're talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, anyway, okay. it's a couple of questions. Let's go for it. Um, Com- Comrade Jen Roll says, uh, summary of elections results, fish tanked. <laughs> nice, because Korean fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fish tanked. Fish tanked. Gotcha. Uh, bun for bun. Read the book Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Americans did just that. Put you into debt and take over your country. Yeah, um, I'm sure. Hey, you know, sure. I, I do want to quickly uh, talk about something. You know, in my most recent video on my channel, I spoke about how Mao Zedong was this terrible murderer, right? Mm-hmm. And it's Good video. It's, it's not up for debate. No. <laughs> okay. No. He really was. <laughs> yes. And he killed like 70 plus million people. He's the his epitome policies. of CCP selfishness. Yes. And he didn't just like do it unknowingly and unwittingly. No. He no. signed off and he said, do this and do this and do this. And he starved people On to purpose. put them in line. Mm-hmm. And he made them do things to earn one spoonful of, you know, food a day type thing. Mm-hmm. You know, every merit you get a spoonful. That's crap. You can read about it. Terrible man. Anyway, I made that video talking about respect and respecting other cultures. Do you know how many Chinese people came on to say, oh yeah, Americans killed 200,000 people in Iraq. Or it's like uh, George Washington or Abraham Lincoln had slaves or or whatever. And it made me angry because, okay, number one, I'm not American. Okay, so you can't pull that shit on me. What what are you talking about? What does that have to do with me? (laughs) Abraham Lincoln's not my president. Okay, not like your dear Mao or something. So you're talking to the wrong person about that. But what really pissed me off the most is that these people were defending a mass murderer. Yeah, they are knowingly. They are literally saying Mao did nothing bad because Abraham Lincoln had a slave. Mm. Or ah, Americans made a war in Iraq, so Mao Zedong killing seventy plus million people is okay. Do you notice they never refuted your facts about no. Mao's murders? No, because they know. Yeah, they're just like, oh yeah, well America does this. Like you know, let you should talk about this. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to divert attention. You're like, this house is on fire. They're like. Oh yeah, well, down there on the other side of town, there's there's another house, a smaller one. It's on fire. You know what does that matter? I'm talking about this house here. I'm talking about Mao Zedong, the mass murderer. Remember uh, the Chinese guy, dictator who killed his own people. That guy. Let's look at him. I don't give a shit about Abraham Lincoln and his slaves or whatever the crap you're gonna throw next time, a gun violence Compton or whatever. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Seriously, Mao Zedong is a mass murderer, and people yeah. respect him, and that's right. a, that's wrong. He's on the money. It's weird, okay? And so every, just a message to everyone, Americans included, because a lot of Americans were doing the same thing. Mm. They're like, oh, yeah, well, what about like... Lib- libtard li- li- states. Either libtards or the, or the, the Nazi around. conservatives, yeah. you know? It doesn't matter. Every single person who all of a sudden has to say, oh, yeah, if you think Mao's bad, well, I got just my shut, own... Honestly, sh- shut up. It's like, we're not talking about that. Talking about Mao, and he was a bad man, and we have to recognize that. We can recognize the other bad things in the world, too. Yeah, if but you want to make context, good analogies, yeah. or useful analogies, that's fine. Yes. But don't say, my situation's worse, Yeah. because you. who cares about Mao? Because yeah. I live in a, a libtard state. Yeah, exactly. So I hate oh, yeah, or like the police are killing, all, killing, like, a, killing yeah. everyone, or shooting right. everyone, or whatever. I don't care. It's not Mao. Mao was terrible. Anyway, right. just had to say that. Sorry, we can continue. And people are allowed to have discourse, and please yes. talk about the issues in your own country. Yeah. Please do it, but don't compare it to a mass murdering dictator, yes. unless it's necessary. Yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, I wanted to make a good analogy for that as well. Mm. China just doesn't doesn't only do this yeah. with uh, with different countries, like this yeah. projectionism. Like you were talking about the Wu Mao saying, sure. like, oh, but Iraq yeah. or whatever. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so. In 2008, when the Sichuan earthquake happened and hundreds of thousands of people died because of poor infrastructure yes. and cheating on building codes and getting buried under rubble and all this stuff, mm. China shut it down immediately. You weren't allowed to talk about it. They're shutting down everyone, spreading the message for awareness to be like, get out. Like, this yeah. is happening. They're like, nope, 
we'd rather have people die so we can put a lid on this situation and yeah. then release it to the public. Yes. And at the same time, they were like, oh, but remember Japan? Remember how bad... Go in the streets and protest Japan now. Yeah, yeah. It's around the exactly. same time that a yeah. massive Jap Japan protest. And that was terrible what they did there. Right. Um, it's so transparent. You know what's even worse is... And something I don't talk about now, you, you do get a lot of people who like to boast about charity, mm. right? Something I never talk about is whatever charity I've ever given because I think that's bullshit. It's a mark of a weak man to Agreed. boast about because then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Right. But when that Sichuan earthquake thing happened, I gave my entire month's salary towards like relief efforts for mm. the kids and stuff there. And the worst part about it is I found out that the money never actually went to them. That's, that's why I think Chinese people, I don't think they're selfish innately. Mm. I think that they, they're the least charitable nation in the world because the outlets for charity are so corrupt the money never reaches Well, the them. worst thing is it was actually through my work. Right. You know, like my actual job. They were the ones who were like, we're going to make a pro... We're going to like, let's collect some money together and we're going to send it to the to the people. So I was like, you know what? You're taking everything. And I gave them my entire month's salary to give. And I found out later that they never gave anything. They right. kept everything. Right. So they basically just got a free month of work out of right. it. Right. Remember, we, we literally lost all faith in Chinese charity until we would go to a place that left an impact on us. Mm. And we found ways to directly donate to their village and yeah. to the people that we met face to face. Absolutely. Yeah. Now they're making that difficult for us as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's just the thing. It really gets to me and it, it pisses me off a lot. Um, you know, it's pretty hurtful and shitty when people say that uh, we hate China because of the things we've been through. It does hurt, I have to be um, honest. And it annoys the, the absolute crap out of me. But you know what? It's not going to stop. It's not going to stop my message. No. And there's one advantage I have, and that is I don't actually give a shit. <laughs> no, quite seriously. Uh, and I've said this before. I'm not American, so you can't pull the usual bullshit on me. I'm not Australian. You know, and I'm sorry to say, but Australians are too sensitive and they're too politically correct. So they get walked all over by the Chinese people these days. You Chinese know, government. I'm, that's what I mean. Yeah. The Chinese people in the Chinese government. Right, right. Okay. They are, they're kind yeah, of people, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm not afraid of being called racist. And you can call me racist day and night. You can do that. It doesn't affect me because I've been called racist my whole life. So it's mm. something that I'm used to and I know how to deal with because I know personally that I'm not. Mm. So I think it's the people that are afraid that perhaps they are a little bit racist that really get hurt by being called racist. But you know, it's like, psh, it's like me saying, Oh, yeah, well, you're short, but you're not right. short, right? It's right. stupid. So I'm in a, in a kind of a unique position where all the usual tactics is the, the tactics that the CCP and communists would use to try and shut someone sure. down don't work on me. No. And uh, you can speak for me as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's, it's an interesting position to be in. But it also makes sure that I'm 24-7 bombarded by a lot of hate it and a lot suck. of bullshit. So, yeah. Honestly, my final mm. message of this whole thing is mm. the only thing Winston and I want to see mm. is for China to liberalize and treat its citizens like human beings. And sure. not put government interests and their families and wealth and selfishness ahead of human lives. Because that's yeah. so messed up. It is messed and up. And that's what our goal is. Yeah. So, anyway, it's time for us to move on to our next... Uh, no. Oh, wait. wait you want to... Okay. Fine. Oh, wait. Sorry. We did. That That came out of some oh, I'm questions. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. My apologies. So our next right. uh, segment is Worldview, where we talk about everything in the world, especially if it's got something to do with China. And this, I'm going to add a little feature to this. Sure. That's, we always uh, say that um, it has to do with China. I'm going to link it back because we're going to talk about paddlefish. Yes. And I'm going to link it to America in some phantom way. Yes, okay. yes, yes, you are. <laughs> so the Chinese paddlefish. So it's this massive fish with this big spoon bill, basically. Yes, right? yes. Kind of looks like a platypus, but very slender and long. Uh, which lived for 200 million years is now extinct in the wild, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and I believe there was none in captivity either. Mm, no, then no. Not. It's just it's gone. What if I told you mm -hmm. that I've eaten a paddlefish fairly uh, recently? I believe you. Okay. There's a reason for that. Now, these paddlefish went extinct. This is paddlefish, by the way. On a plate. On a plate. Uh, these paddlefish went extinct due to human activity. You have overfishing, you have polluting rivers, all this kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Now, why is it on this plate? Well, it's because Chinese people have a taste for paddlefish. Yes. This is Huizhou, a city, yeah, city of about 5 million people. Mm -hmm. There is one, two, three, four, five, maybe like, I don't know, nine, nine. nine. You know, th there's one thing about Baidu. When you search for a specific restaurant or something, it only shows the first 10 results. Yeah. So you have to, got, you there have could to be zoom more. In. Yeah, no, there could be a lot more anyway. So this is the actual restaurant that I went to, if yeah. you guys are interested. Now, they so have like paddlefish. Wan Liu Hu. Yeah, Wan Liu Hu. You, you uh, Guan or whatever. Yeah. You, yeah. So basically, this place sells paddlefish, and they have them live swimming. So I was very concerned. I was like, holy crap, we're going to eat paddlefish? 
Mm. It's like an endangered species. It wasn't it wasn't uh, extinct then, but it was endangered. Right? Yeah, yeah. Turns out they've been importing American paddlefish. Yeah, it's American paddlefish. They, they love breed, it. In, and it does import, taste yeah. great. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they're not rare. No, they're not yeah. rare. And they're they're farmed. Right. Yeah. And that's totally fine. But that's why I was confused because it looked very similar. Yeah. So when I found out about this news, I was like. Oh no, I ate one of those. <laughs> yeah, 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 don't worry, it's not the same thing. No. No, it's the giant Chinese paddlefish from the Yangtze River. Right. That's the one that's gone extinct. Right, that's right. I want to tie this back into China's insatiable, um, I, I want to say desire or hunger, but I'd rather like to say greed instead mm-hmm. when it comes to, um, you know, basically taking uh, natural resources. Mm. It's one of those things that born out of the Cultural Revolution. Yeah. And, you know, when you have a situation where everyone's starving to mm. death, as soon as you have the opportunity to take something, you take all of it. You do. Or because you die. you're worried about, like, you're never going to have right. that opportunity again. So we see this with the absolute pillaging of the local wildlife in China. Like, we've talked about it plenty of times, but when you cross the border from Hong Kong into, into Shenzhen, the birds disappear. This is not a joke. This is no, actually, you no. go, when you cross that border, because in Hong Kong, you've got especially, and um, there's like a shared estuary between Shenzhen and Hong Kong, which mm. has like, the, you know, the Hong Shu Ling, it's like Shenzhen Bay area. Mm. They've got tons of birds there, but that's a bird sanctuary. Mm. I'm talking about when you actually go into the city. You know what? You yeah. know what's funny? What? You know my father-in-law, right? Sure. You know how I raise ravens and crows? Yeah. So I'm tra- in the process of training them. He, I thought he was going to be like super weird about, he kind of was. But he, I was like, you know, now when you go back to China, you can, you know, tame some. And I was like, what am I talking about? Yeah, there's there's nothing. And I asked him and he's like, I haven't seen a raven or a crow since I was like five years old. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Hong Kong, you sit down, you get lots of those little LBJs, whatever, yeah. little brown jobs, yeah. you know, thrush or whatever that thing's called. Little, little or whatever. The, chickadees and stuff. Yeah. Like finch. I think yeah, it's finches. finches. Yeah. Okay. So you get all these finches and stuff lying around and eating at your table and mm. stuff. And, you know, you got birds and people actually go to Hong Kong to like the wetlands and stuff there to take pictures of special birds and all that. They've got bird sanctuaries. Mm. When you cross into mainland China, there are none. Mm. Like in Shenzhen, there are just none. Of course, you do get birds, oh. but they are so I few and far between. Are you going to talk about the cranes? No. Oh, okay. Go for it. So we went for Chinese New Year. We always have to make the rounds and go to all the different family's houses. And there's sure. this one rich family that lives in the middle of nowhere, but they live in like a real terrible concrete box. But it's got a ton of floors, so it's rich, right? Yeah, yeah. And I was, I heard tweeting, mm-hmm. and they have a lot of land, right? It's not theirs, but like they can use it for growing yeah. vegetables and stuff. They have a lot of land and stuff, and they're like, go pick papayas and stuff. And I was like, sweet. I was like, I hear ch- chirping. Yeah, this yeah. is amazing. What I saw was everything was covered in a massive net and there was all these tiny little birds stuck in them like dying and oh, chirping. Really? And I was like, what are these birds doing? They're getting stuck in this netting, you know? And the, the uncle came down and said, oh yeah, that's great. And he like threw them in a bucket. <laughs> He's going to cook them <laughs> Yeah, later. of course. No, they put those, the poachers put yeah, out those nets. Yeah. yeah, look, it's kind of devastating what's happened to the wildlife in China. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they have completely like outfished all their rivers. Mm-hmm. You know, they've put a ban now on fishing in the Yangtze River or something like a 20-year ban yeah, or something. Yeah, something like that. Um, I'm glad it's measures. It's about time. Right. Uh, I doubt they'll be able to enforce it. Um, but all the fish in the seas around China have been fished dry. Why do you think you get all these like conflicts in the South China Sea, etc., etc.? And I've got something else I'd like to show you, which I talk about this every once in a while, but, you know, like, I don't think people take me serious. Um, but the Intelligence Bureau of South Africa... <clears throat> has released this. A massive fleet of Chinese trawlers is plundering the already troubled waters of South Africa. Allegedly, the transponder beacons go off at night and trawlers come into protected waters and then exit before light. Harvesting ships are near to process the fish and shark fins. We went to restaurants that would claim mm-hmm. that the fish mm-hmm. was from South Africa. And I yeah. always thought that was weird. I was like, really? It's super famous. They get all right. the abalone mm. or abalone or whatever the how you call it yeah, kind of, yeah. it's whatever so they get all the abalone from south africa they also get all the fish and the shark fins and mm. stuff like that from the, the coast of south africa and they harvest the crap out of everything they fish the place dry and like you see there this is the intelligence bureau of south africa which probably to be honest <laughs> is not very intelligent <laughs> was, okay but, <laughs> okay but whatever they've got um fishing Trawlers that go in there, turn off their transponders, go in at night, fish like as much as they want, 
go back out to their processing ships, process all this stuff, you know, make sure everything's full, and then send it back to China. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. Doesn't the South African government, like, aren't they super harsh on, like, subsistence fishermen? Absolutely. They've got... Right. You, you were telling me earlier. You need permits to catch anything. And they're super strict. They've got these nature conservation guys or whatever that actually go down to the South beach. South Africa's serious about conservation. Yeah, big time. And they will be like, oh, yeah, take out a measuring thing. And, like, that's too big. And they'll fine you or arrest you or something. They're, like, pretty harsh. You have to stick to the rules. So the local people are being screwed over, but China can come in and fish the seas dry with There's impunity. There's no repercussions. They're probably rewarded. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're, they're in cahoots with the South African government I anyway. Figured. But, I mean, this just kind of ties into the whole paddlefish, you know, being mm. extinct thing. Mm. China will be responsible for the extinction of the majority of species in the world if it's just left unchecked. It's mm. just the way it is. And it's unfortunate, but look at what happened to the rhinos. Why? And the pangolins. Why? Because Chinese traditional medicine demands rhino horn or pangolin scales if or the, whatever. That's the thing is if the money is there, the government doesn't care. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's the issue is that if you were a conservationist, if you did stick up for animals and species and plants and all this kind of stuff in China, you wouldn't be allowed to organize. That's no. the issue. No, no. So the government doesn't do anything. Yeah. People are rewarded monetarily. They're not punished. Yeah. And then no one's allowed to create like grassroots groups to help things out. I mean... Look, this is what's being done clandestinely, right? Mm. So imagine you allow them in with the Belt and Road Initiative. Right. And it's allowed to just be done. That's what we're warning against. Yeah. Right? Totally. Totally. Anyway. Right. Yeah. Um, I guess we're just going to finish off with our questions. Yes, we're going to have our questions and answer, which is right here, where we answer your questions. That is absolutely correct. <laughs> That's um, what we do. Okay. Next is from Tunue Tahitian Faya. 987. Is yeah. Shen Yun a performance worth attending? I was at your fan meetup in San Diego, and there's a Shen Yun show happening soon nearby. Well, okay, here's the thing about Shen Yun. It's, uh, it's, it's well, organized... something we're interested it's, in. <laughs> it's organized by the Falun Gong, which mm -hmm. is a persecuted group in China. So they've got which a... Which is whatever. They have a political agenda, which you will see during the show. They've got some political messages they want to push on you. That being said, though, the dancers themselves are very well trained. Mm -hmm. the, I, I would never go to an event like this myself. I find anything cultural boring as hell. And I, I mean any culture. I'm not going to go watch a geisha doing some crap. I'm not going to go watch a symphony orchestra, Western thing. I'm certainly never in my life going to go watch a Peking opera. Yeah, oh, you know man, that, those are rough. Yeah, no, none of that stuff, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I am not interested in this cultural stuff, okay? Um, I consider You're not myself a man of culture. I consider myself a cultured man, but I'm not going to torture myself in order to call myself With a cultured ancient man. arts. Yes. <laughs> yeah, anxious hearts, you know, yeah, tasting yeah, yeah. dung or whatever. No, quite seriously. The dancers are uh, very impressive. They can do all this contortionist stuff. They right. jump around. They've got all the traditional Chinese dance. It's very long and it's expensive. Uh -huh. And it's got a polit political agenda. And uh, I would say that if you are the kind of person who is interested in sort of Chinese or Asian culture and you want to see something a little different, you want to see some talented dancers, I'd say go for it. And if you've got um, an overly nationalist parent-in-law or an overly it. nationalist wife or something take, take her along just to piss them off mm. yeah my mother-in-law actually wanted to go see it you should let her go I will just pay for it um i have to go down where it's in san diego yeah yeah okay three hour drive yeah no, um good luck with that thanks <laughs> i'm sure the no but they don't just have it in san diego right oh, okay. they have it all over the place i'm sure oh, okay yeah. Anyway, my, my two cents about Shen Yun mm. is that I'm also not interested. I'm not going to be as harsh as you about that, but I'm not interested in dancing or ballet at all. Mm. Like, legitimately don't care. You can, you can go to South Africa and watch a Zulu dance. No, thanks. Um, but my point is, I think that the Falun Gong, although they have a message, why shouldn't they have a message? Well, you, say, yeah. you can't say their political message is wrong. They're against the CCP, and I am too. It no. doesn't mean I support. It doesn't mean I want to join the Falun Gong. I think it's weird. I understand, I think but I think the the problem is is that it's not very straightforwardly stated. So you're getting into something you don't really know. It's kind of like, oh, let's go watch a a stunt show, but it's organized by Jehovah's Witnesses. Sure, but and then how, like how, halfway through the stunt show, they're like, oh, you know, if you don't the rapture this or that, it's going to piss you off. Right? Yeah, but how how transparent is the CCP with their shit? They're not. Let's be honest, at all, right? Yeah. So maybe it's just using the same tactics that Chinese yeah. people are used to. 
Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Sure. And the following going, I don't want to join some breathing exercise where you believe you can fly or some crap. Yeah, I but it's not cancer. it's not dangerous, no, right? No, innately. Sure. No. And they were murdered in China. Mm-hmm. Sure. So I understand why they would be pretty pissed off. Absolutely, right? yeah, yeah. If they were trying to indoctrinate me during Shen Yun to join Falun Gong, that would piss me off. But if they're going to do a political statement against the CCP, I have no issue with that. Sure. That's my point. Yeah, which is what they do, basically. Right. But uh, go take a look. Yeah, for sure. Go and enjoy. MS Soy Sauce, keep up the good work, guys. Thank you. Mm. Overlord VHS, give us a, 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 a pointing up. finger. Thank you. Space Otter, uh, I enjoy and appreciate your guys' content. I joined your Worthless Whips channel, but I uh, want to know if it's more beneficial if I support you through Patreon instead. I'd like you to receive as much money as possible. Thank you so much. I, um, um, either way, but if you want to see the content. Yeah, we're super pumped about the Worthless Whips thing because although we're not going to slow down when it comes to this channel or our mm. personal channels or ADV China, it's all continuing the same. We want to put a lot more focus on Worthless Whips. We want sure. to grow it into our biggest Nothing's changing. Thing. We're just getting really yeah, stressed we, out. We, want, we really <laughs> hope that Worthless Whips can become our sort of feature mm. thing that we work on because we, we it. enjoy it the most. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you really want to support us, uh, please join the Worthless Whips patron because yeah. that will You can vote on cars, the next cars that we're going to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of people are saying Worthless Whips is amazing. Sweet. Super happy. We love the two. And uh, we'll, we'll talk more about this at the end. I'm going to read the last couple of questions. Sure. Killbud Tactics, uh, what would be some tips about internet safety before going to China? I'm, am I going to get arrested if they find your YouTube channel on my phone? No. No, you won't get arrested. Basically, um, the only thing you, you should be very careful of is when crossing over the border, they mm-hmm. have been checking phones for pictures Randomly. of the Hong Kong protests, something that's like free democracy, you know, those kind of things. Mm-hmm. So don't have any of that kind of media mm-hmm. on your phone. Mm-hmm. Um, you can have a VPN on there, just... Don't, I always no. recommend people to go to go to mainland China right now. Mm. Just bring a burner phone. Buy yeah. like a fifty or hundred dollar phone. Yeah, take a crap phone with you. With with no Western social media on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You can install it once you're across the border. Yeah, it's not like I'm you can use it anyway in. without a yeah, VPN. Without a VPN. So. I'm saying. Yeah, uh, you'll be but you'll be fine. Uh, yeah, if you went through the border and just showed us, their, our, you know, showed them our faces, well, I would be interested to see what they would do. So let us probably know. nothing. They wouldn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, Ray Kamizono, mm-hmm. appreciate it. I believe you're Japanese. I have a Chinese girlfriend, and she lives in Japan, and she still thinks Mao was great leader. It's normal. Uh, China bullying behavior countries is normal because China is powerful. She thinks economy power is more important than freedom. Yeah, That's exactly yeah. what we said throughout the whole show. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it is kind of sad how most people in China still uh, respect Mao Zedong. Yeah, and it's up to you, mm. Ray Kamizono, to slowly change her mind, not by saying, you are wrong, this mm. is bad. That's not how you do it. Yeah. It's slowly changing her mind, introducing her to different media and different perspectives. The only way that I've ever found any Chinese person's mind changed about someone like Mao Zedong is when they watch interviews from other Chinese people. Yeah, that's really It has important. to be a Chinese person. That's how Vivi's got her speak, mind changed because her professor showed, yeah, showed them. Speaking in Chinese right. about their experiences during that time. Mm. Because they will never trust a Japanese person no. or... A South African person or an no. American person, because they will immediately there's like a little trip switch, you know, like in your house. They told me, you yeah. know, when you shove your your knife into yeah. the socket and it just goes, <laughs> right. That's what happens in, in the nationalists. They've been brought up this way. As soon as you say Mao Zedong back, it goes off, and they're like, they've been told if a Westerner yeah. or a foreigner, to a Japanese person says this, yeah. It just goes off and they're like, you are a foreigner. You don't our understand. Our China is different. You, you don't, don't understand. understand our Chinese. You don't understand our Chinese history or our China because we're just too good for you. Oh, that's something along those lines. You could never understand. It's mm. just too much for we're your, too different. your puny barbaric brain <laughs> to ever comprehend. Milk drinking barbaric. Yeah, exactly. What's with all that hair on your chest anyway? Mm. What are you, a gorilla? So, you know, all it's this. It's never cr- going to be that intense. Right? Yeah, right. but it joke. literally is like a trip switch yeah. goes off. But when it's another Chinese person saying mm. it, that trip switch doesn't go off and they can actually absorb that. Tiananmen Square, Mao interviews, all this kind of stuff. Find it. It's all over YouTube. Yeah. It's genuine Chinese people that are breaking down into tears remembering this stuff. Yeah. They'll touch them. That's something that, I, that's the only thing I've ever found that's, mm, that's actually worked in any of these kind of situations. So I suggest looking that stuff up. Absolutely. Cool. Now, thank you. I want to say thank you, guys. Mm. Um, before we shut this down, we want to play something for you. Yes, I think a lot of you know what this is, but just hang ten because if you haven't seen this yet, you're gonna watch it anyway. And we want, we it want to we, go yeah, and this find cool cars that you know would usually be out of the range of a high schooler to buy. Fix them up for real cheap, and then I will sell it for a profit. It's probably why the cars crashed. 
I don't think it's legal to drive without a door. It's not a mail truck. This is the worst car I've ever driven in my life. Definitely gonna lose a lot of money on this one. I can't believe how much money we made on this car. It's terrible, I can't see shit. I just need to go to the hospital. <laughs> this car is not worth it. Jesus Christ, man. No. And we're back. Yeah, we're back. And of course, you couldn't get away you this cannot week, get away this week. This every week Every single one of our channels is promoting Worthless Whips mm. this week. Just this week. Just this week. Just we this promise week. next week it'll be back to normal. Yeah. But we want any of you who have not gone over to take a look, you don't have to subscribe, but you can take a look mm -hmm. and decide if you think it's cool yeah. or not. We've you, got our like first it. two episodes out already. Right. Yeah. It's awesome. Uh, yeah. It's youtube.com slash Worthless Whips. Yeah. But easily just go down to the description in this video. Yeah. It's right up there. It's fantastic. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, a lot of people, and this is this is me trying to convince people to go watch it, because a lot of people who went on there, they were like, listen, I was wicked skeptical. I don't give a shit about cars. Yeah. And they came out, this is awesome. It was so entertaining. Thank you so much. So, you know. <laughs> I got to mention something. You're not handing me money. Okay, no. Um, oh, yeah, <laughs> please do. So we're, we put a dollar value on the car because we're like, this is how much a door costs. This is how much, you know, we spent. And everyone's right. like... You're not taking into account the cost of labor. You have to charge yourself an hourly rate, blah, blah, blah. That's not how much bollocks, okay? When you're doing your own hobby, when you finish that crossword puzzle, do you say to yourself, well, that took me an hour. I'm just going to pay myself for finishing that crossword puzzle. Or you pour yourself a coffee. You're like, guess what? I just mm. pour, oh, by the way, I yeah. poured you a cup of coffee. Oh, okay. Well, here you go. Oh, thank yeah, you there so we much. Are. Yeah, that, I'm paying you for your labor. No. Well, I'm going to take it back. Um, yeah. So actually, when you give me the cup back, you can just have Okay, that yeah, because that, that was my labor. Yes. People don't charge themselves labor. What am I going to go? To the ATM, draw money out, and give it to myself? There's, there's so much freaking people on there <laughs> saying you're being dishonest with your viewers. You are totally over budget because you need to pay yourself. No, no we don't. No, I don't pay myself to do my hobby. I don't pay myself to take a freaking shower. Oh, look, I skateboarded over there. Oh, what did How do you pay yourself? Yeah, come on. Seriously. How do you pay yourself? <laughs> so, um, remember, the whole point of Worthless Whips is... We show people how they can buy a cool car, fix it up themselves. And you mm. don't have to pay yourself for labor. And if you do, you're done. This guy is switching lever. Awesome. Yeah. Winston, thank you. Thank you for that. I hate the people who think that everything has to be converted into money. Absolutely. It it's nonsense, man. Thank it's you. garbage. It's not how it works. I have to go out and buy a freaking door and a piece of paint or whatever. Yes, I have to pay for those things. But I don't have to pay for my own time to actually No. So when we do this budget, yeah. buy the car for $1,000, fix it for under $1,000, the budget goes in to the parts. Yes. Not how much we pay. Because that's what you would do. You wouldn't be paying yourself. No. Right? That's an interesting way to end this it episode. Is. And we will see you again in two weeks. Don't worry. We'll not, we're not going on another holiday. Yeah. So um, uh, we, we can't wait to see you again. Yeah. And we'll be seeing you in all our regular videos. There'll be another Serpents a Day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. So guys, thank you so much as always. You know the drills, stay awesome. And I don't want to cut myself off here, so I'm going to try my best. Uh, see you next time.